soap making. Soap is nothing more than an alkali and fats. Mm -hmm. And then they react together and make soap. I have taken some uh, raw pig fat, lard, that I've had in the freezer for a while. And I am cooking it down to extract the pure grease from it. I've got some in here. Some of this was already cold when I put it in here, so it's still lumpy. But we'll need to have, for this recipe, we'll need to have eight pounds of lard. We have to have enough lye to turn the fat into soap. Um, it is better to have some free fat that doesn't get processed you know, totally because it, it actually softens your skin. And one of the process, as this thing processes, one of the things that happens is glycerin is released and that's also an emollient for your skin. It's very good for your skin. Mm. Um, I tell everybody the only difference between homemade soap and 100, uh, I mean 99.44, 100% pure ivory, like on the package, is the fact that they whip it, whip the ivory and incorporate air into it so it floats. Oh. And it's okay. soft and it wears away a lot faster. This is mutton towel soap. It's a lot harder than what this is going to be because this is large soap. Um, different greases do different things a little bit, mm. but it's all turns into soap. What I'm trying to do now is measure out. I have so far uh, six pounds of fat in there. I hope I'm going to reweigh it again just to be careful because I really don't want to uh, mess up on this batch. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get the little bits of, of pork out of the, the grease. And that should, that's another pound. And there's still a little bit of silt in it, but that'll, that'll go away whenever the lye is added. We're going to be aiming at uh, getting our temperatures pretty close together as somewhere less than 100 degrees for our lye water and our fats. And I'm going to leave that for right now. And we're going to add some lye to some water. And that's going to be interesting. That's going to get very, very hot. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we're going to have to let that sit for a while. My mom was born in 1922. And she was the third girl and she remembered her mother making soap. That's why, as a child, she decided she wanted to show me how it was done. But she always remembered her mother using commercial lye. And uh, I said that's pretty early in the 1900s. Mom remembered a lot of things. Now, if you had to use ashes for your lye, you would take a barrel or a V-shaped hopper and you would line it with straw and you would pile your ashes, especially uh, the stove ashes from the cooking stove because they were nice. Uh, usually, I know my uh, dad told me that they would use poplar and that made a real nice white ashes. They would burn up quickly for, so, because especially in the summer, you didn't want fire in your heating stove, I mean in your cooking stove. The lye would, you would drip water down through the top of the, of the barrel to let it slowly leach through and drip out and then you would catch that and then you would boil it down and the trick was to have the lye strong enough to float a fresh egg. I, you know, there was no chemists back then. <laughs> Everybody was a chemist, I should say, and you had your own way of, of doing things. It'll end up getting thick, but some people let it thicken until it gets almost like, um, oh, what was the reference? Anyway, getting way thicker than I do before I pour. But the object is we have to stir it until it incorporates. And uh, because if you don't, it'll end up layered. It'll be kind of gummy on the top and uh, harder on the bottom, which after it sits a while, it really doesn't hurt anything, it just looks strange. And remember the first mom made, she hadn't made any in years, and I was about 10 years old. And uh, she said she had gotten an iron pot somewhere, or 
trying to find. She says, okay, we're going to do this. And so we went out in the yard and uh, went under the tree and she was following the direction. She said, grandma never poured the soap. She would let it harden in the iron pot and then cut it out in slabs and chunks. You know, it was uneven bars. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's always an option if you want to leave it in the pot and then turn it out. But I would say it would be a little bit more difficult. We had to kind of chip it out. So. Some folks say the times are hard. I just say, oh my Lord, coffee's cold and I've been sold for half a dollar bill. Every seed that I do sow, harvest time, nothing's grown. By tomorrow, maybe even tonight, I'll be able to turn it out onto the newspapers, and uh, then I'll be able to cut it before it gets really hard. Mm. And then I'll, uh, what I'll do is I'll get some other boxes so I can set it out of the way that are lined with paper, and then I will stack them where they will dry. The bars will be separate. 